One common comment I see online is, why should I choose Elm over GHCJS, or vice versa? And there are some good arguments we made for that. Um, so, this is from the Elm point of view. If somebody would like to suggest reasons that you should look at GHCJS, I'd love to hear them. Uh, and I'm not saying there aren't any, I'm just saying I'm more familiar with Elm. So, there are a couple of good reasons to my mind. First of all, I think the Elm community is, is much more active than the GHCJS community. Now, the Haskell community as a whole is quite re vibrant and lively. No questions about it. But the percentage of that community that's dedicated to doing web front end is fairly small. Second of all, second, I feel that the Haskell community is not spend as much time investigating how web stuff actually works. They're taking assumptions from the back end and putting them on the front end. And I find that's not as effective. The Elm, the Elm architecture, you can like it or dislike it, but it has a very specific idea of how you should do things. My turn with GHCJS and the project I tried to build in it was that you can take a lot of typed code, but at some level you're still calling out to JavaScript to actually do stuff and usually, in the examples that I saw, we're largely using jQuery. So you have this wonderful, strongly typed structure, but at its core, it's still jQuery. So all of the benefits of types kind of fade away because you, you lose those guarantees because you have some code in the middle that doesn't have any. And is often not well tested. So that's the second one. The third reason was, I found the GHC JS compiler would be really slow. Uh, it would often take 40 seconds on a fairly fast computer to compile a simple change. And, you know, that really gets annoying after about five minutes. Um, the next reason is that Elm has a much shallower learning curve at first. Many of the things that are very complex in Haskell, like type classes and monads, either don't exist in Elm or are much simpler. Now this does reduce some, reduce some level of abstraction, but it also makes it easier for a new developer to come into it. It also makes it easier for a developer new to a project to come into it. Things are much more likely to be explicit. In Haskell, when you import things into a module, the default is you just import all the functions into your module. Whereas in Elm, the default is the opposite, where you don't import anything and you namespace everything. This leads to slightly more verbose code, there are more characters in a file. No question, that's a, a thing. But it also means more, to my mind, more readable code. When I've read Haskell code, I've often looked at something going, okay, where did this operator, where did this function, it, it was you know, 30 imports, this function came from one of them. But where, and yes, maybe my editor or IDE could figure that out for me, but it'd be really nice if I could just look at it and say, okay, it's a, you know, it's that. And so if it's, you see it on the code, you could just ask to, you know, result dot with default, the equivalent, you know, or user dot info. It's like, okay, I see user dot info. Okay, I know it's a user, it's the information about a user. You know, maybe there's some, you know, you can still do it badly in any language, of course, but. You know, the defaults in this room are that, yeah, it says exactly what it is, and you don't have to sort of assume as much. And the final reason is, Haskell's origin was as a research language. So there's plenty of ideas in Haskell that were put in because somebody, I think, wanted to say, you know, is this a good idea for a language design? Should we try to allow people to do it this way or that way? And the Haskell ethos has always been, yeah, let's put a new feature in, put in a pragma, put in, you know, metaprogramming of all sorts of levels, because somebody might find it useful somewhere, or because we want to figure out, is it a good idea? When developing the Elm language, Evan has been very much on the other tack. We're not going to put anything in until we are convinced that it has a really strong use case. And that has some pluses and minuses. It does mean that so abstractions are hard, but it also means that the core of the language is much simpler, and that the learning the language is a much 
shallower learning curve. This can be good or bad, but I think it's fairly good. And finally, in Elm, you can have a very good assumption that once your code compiles, it will run, it will run without runtime errors. I've managed to create inadvertently some very some JavaScript crashes in GHCJS with fairly simple code. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly how I did it, but I did it. So I like that feature about Elm that I know my code will run without crashes. And GHCJS has many other fine qualities, but that's not one of them. So that is why I like Elm over GHCJS.